Hello everyone. In this lecture, I will be discussing design of clocked sequential circuit. A synchronous sequential circuit consists of flip-flops and a combinational circuit. So, the design of the sequential circuit involves choosing the type and the number of flip-flops and also the determination of the combinational circuit that satisfies the given problem statement. The number of flip-flops can be determined from the number of states required in the circuit and also based on the choice of the state assignment. The combinational circuit is derived from the state table by evaluating the flip-flop input equations and the output equations. So coming to the procedure for the design of the sequential circuit, the first step involves derivation of state diagram from the given problem statement. The second step, any redundant states can be removed. Next, the state assignment is done. There are different state assignments. The simplest method is to use the binary state assignment. Next, derive the state table. And then, choose the type and the number of flip-flops required. And then, derive the flip-flop input and the output equations from the state table. And finally, draw the logic diagram for the sequential circuit. Consider an example for the design of the sequential circuit that detects three or more consecutive ones. The first step is to draw the state diagram. The state diagram is a graphical representation of the behavior of the sequential circuit. The state diagram consists of circles that represent state. So, we will start with an initial state S0. For an input 0, the circuit remains in the same state with the output 0. The output of the circuit will be 0 until the 3 or more consecutive ones are deducted. For the input 1, the circuit goes to the state S1. For the next input 1, the circuit goes to the state S2 which indicates that two consecutive ones are deducted. For the input 0, the circuit goes back to the initial state S0. Now, if again next one it is deducted, the circuit goes to the state S3 with the output which indicates that three consecutive ones are deducted. And for any 0 input, the circuit goes to the state S0. And if more ones are deducted, the circuit remains in the state S3 with the output 1. And if the input is 0, it will go to the initial state S0. So, this is the state diagram for the given sequential circuit. So, this circuit, it is in sequence deductor that detects 3 or more consecutive ones. Once the state diagram is drawn, the second step, is to reduce the state. Here there is no equivalent state. So we will move on to the third step of binary state assignment. So since there are four states, I am using two bits. So S0 is assigned 0, 0. S1 is assigned 0, 1. S2 is assigned 1, 0. And S3 is assigned 1, 1. So once the binary state assignment is done, I have redrawn the state diagram with the corresponding binary values for the states. So the next step is to derive the state table. The state table, it represents the behavior of the circuit in the tabular form. State table, it consists of the present state, next state and the output for the input. The input can be either logic 0 or logic 1. And since there are two bits, I have represented the present state as QA and QB. And the next state is represented by QA plus and QB plus. And the output is represented by Y. So, I will start with the initial state 0, 0. So, for 0, 0, two input are possible. So, 1 it is 0, 
the other input is 1. So, for the input 0, the circuit, it is remaining in the state 0, 0 with the output 0. And for the input 1, the circuit goes to the state 0, 1 with the output 0. Similarly, repeat the same process for the remaining states and derive the state table for the other states 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, the next step is to derive the state equations. So, here there are two bits A and B. So, I will have two state equations. One it is QA plus. So, you observe where I am having 1. So, this 1 here corresponds to the min term 0, 1, 1. So, 0, 1, 1 it represents 3. And this 1 corresponds to 1, 0, 1 that represents 5. And this 1, it corresponds to the min term 1, 1, 1, which represents a binary value. And in decimal, it is represented by 7. And similarly, you write the state equation for QB plus. So, this 1, it corresponds to 0, 0, 1. That is, in decimal, it is 1. And this 1 corresponds to 1, 0, 1. That represents decimal 5. And this 1, it corresponds to triple 1 that corresponds to the decimal 7 and then you write the output equation this one corresponds to 110 that is 6 and here the one corresponds to triple 1 that corresponds to decimal 7. So I have written the state equations now I need to determine the flip-flop input equations. This input equations it can be derived from the characteristic equation and now we need to choose the type of the flip-flop so, in this case, I have choose D flip-flop. The characteristic equation for the D flip-flop, it is given by Q plus Z equal to D. Q plus represents the next state and D represents the D input of the flip-flop. So, here the input equation is same as that of the next state equation. So, the input DA will be equal to QA plus and the input DB is equal to QB plus. So, my input equations is same as that of the state equations. So, now I have derived the equations for flip-flop input equations and the output equations. So, next step is to simplify the Boolean e expressions. The one of the method to simplify the Boolean equations is to use Karnoff map. So, this Karnoff map, it consists of grid of squares each square it represent a min term and this are represented in a gray code that is the adjacent number they differ by a one bit position so here it is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and the 7 so now i will just mark the values for da the corresponding min terms are 3 5 and 7 so i'll mark it in the respective squares. So, 3, 5 and 7. Similarly, for DB, it is 1, 5 and 7. For the output equation Y, so it is 6 and the 7. So, the next step is to group the adjacent ones. So, here I can form two groups. So, this group corresponds to QAX, that is so, this group, it corresponds to QA and here in these two adjacent squares, it represents X. So, it is QA, X and this group, if this corresponds to QB, X. So next, I am plotting for DB. Again, you group adjacent squares, the corresponding min terms QA, X and QB bar X. Similarly, group the ones for the output equations. This group, it corresponds to QA and QB. So, now I have simplified the input equations and the output equations. The final step is to draw the logic diagram. So, this sequential circuit, it consists of two flip-flops, A and B. 
the input of the A flip flop it is DA and the output it is QA. For the B flip flop, the input it is DB and the output is QB and QB bar. So we have derived the equation for DA. It is QA x plus QB x. So I will be having two AND gates, one for QA x, the other for QB x. So output of these two AND gates will be given to an OR gate to get this expression. So similarly for the next flip flop db it is given by this equation again it consists of two product terms so i will be having two and gates so the output of the two and gates will be given to an or gate to get the resultant equation and finally coming to the output equation y it corresponds to qa and qb so this i'll be having one and gate so that corresponds to qb and qa so this is the final step and we have arrived at the sequential circuit design. Thank you. Happy learning.